Thank you all for joining in. We are very excited to connect with you all. Just give me one second here as I share my screen to get us all started. Well, we are all very excited to be here today to speak to you all about our amazing world of data science and analytics here at TransUnion. So I wanted to kick off with an introduction. So my name is Nancy Martinez and I manage the internship program here at TransUnion for all of our US offices. I've been with TU for a little bit over five years now. I attended the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I saw some fellow Illini, I think, on the chat there. Um, I graduated with uh, my bachelor's in marketing and supply chain. And today with us, I have Pratiba Prabhu. Uh, she's been with TransUnion for the last five years, and she leads the data science and innovations team. Her background is in engineering. However, when she started at Georgia State University, her professors kind of led her towards that data science and analytics field, where she then graduated with an MBA with a focus in decision sciences. So, Thank you for joining us, Prativa. Hi, everyone. Awesome. And our second panelist here today, we have Atika Vindal, who started as an intern with us in the summer of 2019, and then joined us shortly after as a full-time associate. Uh, she works on providing analytical solutions to, to use international markets for just different industries, along with various tool developments. She holds her master's degree in analytics from Georgia State University as well. Hi, everyone. Um, all right. So to kick it off, I always like to ask a quick question, because I think when we're thinking about TransUnion, everyone has their own ideas of what we do. So I want to hear from you all on the chat, just quickly answering. When you think about TransUnion, what's the first couple of words that come to mind? Who are we? What do we do? Credit reports, credit scores. Credit security and score management. They keep coming. Yes, yes, definitely. A financial institution, credit report provider, credit protection. Yes, these are all part of what TransUnion does. That is definitely at the core of what we've done for the past 50 plus years. Um, but in most recent years, we really expanded our reach. We've grown into different markets. And so not only do you find us within the financial services space, right, being a credit bureau, but we've also gone into industries like insurance, digital media, uh, the rental space, even the public sector space, just to name a few. With all the information that we're able to gather, TransUnion has really transformed into a global information and insights company where we're making trust possible between the businesses and consumers in today's modern economy. And the way that we do this is by ensuring that each consumer is reliably and safely represented by creating an accurate and comprehensive picture of each person. Now, to give you a quick overview of just the amounts of data that we have, um, TransUni has over a billion consumer files. To put this into perspective, we have information for about one in every seven human beings in the adult population worldwide. That's quite a bit of data. And as you can see here, we have 65 plus petabytes of information. And I had to go do a quick search. I didn't know how much, how many, how much information is petabytes. When I looked this up, one petabyte is equivalent to 1 million gigabytes. That's a lot of information that we have here at TransUnion, especially I know within our data science and analytics space that gives you a lot of opportunity um, for growth and just to find new ways to use this information for good. Now with that, just giving you a quick overview of TransUnion in general, um, we have over 8,000 associates globally, and we continue to grow. With offices all across the globe, um, we have 75 plus offices um, that I think, I, I don't think I can even name all of them at this point, just as much the growth that we've had here in the past couple of years. So definitely a lot of great opportunities available at TransUnion, especially within the data science and analytics space. 
And so I want to make sure that we have the chance to also speak to you all about our summer internship program, because I think that's what a lot of you are here today to learn a little bit more about. So I'll just cover some of the basics here of what to expect for the summer, kind of how long the internship program is. But I know Pratiba will go over into a little bit more detail after that um, and share more insights about the data science and analytics team and then some of the projects that our interns have been able to work on in the past. So with our internship program, it is a 12 week long program. You'll be working full time over the summer. Um, start dates would be between May and June, definitely dependent on when your availability um, starts there with your academic schedule. We will have over 70 plus interns and just in our data science and analytics team alone, we'll have 13 interns this upcoming summer, which is the biggest group we've had for the data science and analytics team. Location-wise, our internships will be linked to our different offices. Um, so from Chicago, Stanford, Connecticut, Atlanta, Georgia, Kremlin, Pennsylvania, Boca Raton, Florida, just to name a few. Now, particularly for our data science and analytics team, I know the major groups that we have are within the Chicagoland area and of course, Atlanta, Georgia area as well. Um, but definitely a lot of opportunities there. Um, when it comes to just where we'll be with the internship program in itself. Right now, it is to be decided on whether the internship program will be fully remote or in a hybrid model. So more to come, we'll share more of those details as they become available to you all. Cause I think I saw some of those questions popping in. But throughout the summer, our interns really get to engage on real world projects, right? Really embracing projects that they get and developing their skill sets. So you may get the opportunity to work on independent research or a group project within the team, or maybe even both. Um, there's definitely a variety of opportunities there. We'll also host a variety of workshops and networking opportunities with our TU associates for you to be able to network with other TU associates outside of the immediate teams that you're in. Right. I think one of the main focuses when it comes to an internship opportunity, it's not only the skills that you build and the projects that you get to work on, but also the network that you build within that internship. We'll also have mentorship pairing within the team. So based on the team that you're in, you'll have a manager, but you'll also have what we call a buddy, someone that you'll be able to engage with throughout your internship program. Um, that's also within the immediate team to help and support your growth there. Now, when it comes to career opportunities, as I mentioned before, and I think I can share a little bit more about her experience there as well, but our interns do have the opportunity to join us full time after graduation. So that's a little bit about TransUnion and the internship program. I don't want to take up too much time because I know Pratiba has a lot to share with you all about the data science and analytics team. So Pratiba, I'll hand it off to you. All right, Nancy. Thank you. All right, so um, analytics is at the core of our global operations and data science and analytics team, as we like to call ourselves, is at the hub of analytic excellence and solutions delivery. We have about 80 associates in the US and roughly 300 worldwide, all with advanced degrees in quantitative fields from leading institutions. We have 10% uh, PhDs on our team from disciplines such as math, statistics and economics. While we are headquartered in Chicago, just as Nancy mentioned, we do have analytics teams sitting in our satellite offices in Atlanta, Denver, Portland, and St. Cloud. The prime focus of our team is mainly to support global markets with analytic consulting, build global solutions that are market and data driven, and invest and develop state-of-the-art technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning to innovate at scale and drive thought leadership. You might ask, what kind of models do we build? A simple answer to that question is lots. We build a diverse set of models for a variety of different industries. These could be risk models, bankruptcy models, income estimators, recovery models, collections models for our financial services and auto and uh, insurance uh, verticals as well as building propensity models and fraud models for our marketing and fraud team. These are not just for the US markets, but also for the international ones. We also have, a, uh, uh, have developed a self-serve analytics platform called Prama, which is mainly a sandbox for our customers to come explore our data and understand consumer behavior and trends. 
So what about the data that's feeding into these models? While it's common knowledge, as we've just seen from all of the answers that we got back, um, most of you know that financial institutions report credit data to us. But what you may not know is that we also have access to a wide variety of data sources such as property, rental data, driver's history information, mortgage data, public record data, and so on. All of these data sources are coming together to create powerful solutions for a variety of different use cases. And as you can see, most of these are being powered by some of the latest technologies. A fully functional R&D environment leverages big data technologies such as Hadoop, Hive, and Spark, and houses a large repository of data and analytic models. We use mainly R and Python to build our analytic products and solutions. As I mentioned earlier, and also based on what you heard from Nancy, we build enterprise-wide capabilities and establish best practices across several functional areas. Our consultant group works directly with clients to develop custom models and provide strategic guidance for their specific needs. Our analytics technology group is actively involved in developing and maintaining a data science toolkit that is accessible to all the internal data professionals. Our global and strategic support group has regional teams in Canada, UK, LATAM, Africa, to just name a few, and they support our international markets across the globe. And finally, our predictive modeling group, to just name a few of the uh, areas that we uh, focus on. And now for the part that most of you are very eager to learn about, our intern projects. Now, our interns typically come in and work on a variety of different projects. Uh, in the recent past, these have ranged from looking at the changing pattern population migration or investigating their credit and insurance behavior, especially after COVID, or researching into NLP technologies on uh, textual data such as employment and occupation or building a constrained neural network or exploring ways to interpret them. Now, all of these could be individual projects that they work on independently uh, under the supervision of a manager, or they could be part of a team uh, with other TU associates. So I welcome you to come join the world of analytics and see how we do our, uh, our work. Awesome, and let me hear. So that was just a quick overview of TransUnion, our internship program, and just a little bit more about the data science and analytics team. We really wanna make sure that we can open this up to you all for any questions that you have. Um, I'll be asking Atika and Pativa a few here online, but please be to submit them now in the chat. We'll be going through them. Um, to be able to answer any other particular questions that you all have. We're very excited here. Wanted to make sure that we can get some live questions coming through. Now, I think there's two items that I on my end want to include here about the internship program in itself. And so the first one would be, I think I saw a couple of those questions come through earlier, is that if to you uh, sponsors and the answer is yes. We do uh, sponsor students for the right position there. So that is available. When it comes to the recruitment process, because I think that was the second most popular question I saw come through, um, is around the just the general process that students will go through. So once you apply to the position, um, our team will be reviewing the applicants and those that we move forward with. Uh, you will receive an invitation um, to complete a video interview along with the quick tech assessment. Um, once that is complete, our team will review and we'll follow up with you all. If you decide to move forward to that next step, you would get the chance to meet with two TU associates and interview with them to further learn more about the role and for them to learn more about you. After the inter that interview, the team will make their decision on who they would be moving forward with. And just as a reminder, we do have 13 internship opportunities open. Now the internship opportunities, I know Pratima shared a little bit about the different teams. So the internships would vary in what groups they will be located in. So you may get a chance to work within the digital media space. You may get a chance to work within financial services, um, insurance, just wide variety. I think uh, the team always has a lot of great projects uh, for interns to work on throughout the summer. 
Now, when it comes to location, I'm just gonna answer a couple of questions I think are coming in on particularly location wise. Um, right now it's to be decided on our internship opportunities, whether they'll be in person or remote, more information to come on those. Um, and we can talk more one-on-one -on -one once we uh, get to that stage there. All right, so I'll kick it off here now and ask Prativa and Ati, because I think you all want to hear a little bit more from them. Um, to kick it off, the question to you both is, what attracted you about TransUnion? What's the culture like here, especially within the DSA team? So uh, I, I really love working for TransUnion for more than one reason. Um, first of all, they have fantastic benefits, um, you know, um, and also uh, uh, specifically talking about, um, you know, the analytics organization, um, what I have seen, especially within the TU analytics organization, which I've kind of not seen uh, elsewhere that, um, you know, that it's a highly supportive and uh, inclusive community. Now we, um, you know, I personally came in from an acquisition that TransUnion made, uh, you know, but, um, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as, even as we were transitioning into the TU world and, uh, you know, learning all about the, the environment and everything, it was an extremely, extremely supportive group, um, um, you know, and also what, what, what intrigues me the most about uh, the way it is structured over here is, um, you know, our, our uh, uh, the head of organization, the analytics organization is ex extremely, extremely passionate about creating opportunities for all of us to wear um, different hats. So you may be working in, you know, like a digital marketing space or a financial vertical, but, uh, you know, if, uh, if there is an innovation lab that's happening, uh, say, an, you know, for an insurance uh, client and, uh, you know, they raise hands because they need more people to kind of jump in on that specific project or whatever, you know, um, any of us, anyone across the uh, analytics group can raise their hand and actually jump in on those projects. So uh, at any given point of time, even though you may have your specific uh, groups that is, you're assigned to and, and you're working on, you get an opportunity to wear several different hats and touch several different uh, areas. Uh, so I, I, I feel this kind of an environment, you know, I, I have never been bored ever since I've joined uh, TransUnion because you are working on a variety of different things. So that, that's what I love the most about working at um, analytics group NTU. Yeah, I would, I would absolutely uh, second that uh, the part you said that you're never bored. I would absolutely say the same thing. Um, so just to, just an example, as an example, like you have certain projects you're associated with, but that doesn't limit you to participate in the other research projects anybody else is doing in Chicago or anywhere else. Uh, there were there were projects done last year where there were team from like different countries coming together, working out different time zones, so that it was very interesting. So uh, I think that uh, keeps not just like uh, um, keeps uh, things interesting for data science. But for yourself, as like you get to know about different people, you learn from their backgrounds. And uh, also for me, uh, I think one uh, really good thing that stood out for me was the uh, the developer uh, team we have at TransUnion. Like even as a data scientist, you can you are most welcome to like uh, contribute there. So you learn about like, how do you make, I never thought I will make packages or like create functions or contribute, but uh, everybody was like so welcoming. And if you want to learn more, you can always contribute to that. So I think, uh, I think that I will completely second that you're never bored. Every project you work with is, uh, they're constantly like upgrading their uh, packages. There's always something better to look forward to. So I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, I have like more, more or less the same reasons as you, Pratibha. And also like uh, uh, one more thing that uh, people I met here are like one of the smartest people and also like extremely modest. And Pratibha said like they are very supportive. Like uh, they raise hand and you know, everybody is like very welcome. So, yeah. Awesome, thank you. And just another question that came in, just a general question is, what would you say maybe the greatest challenge you faced in your role and how have you overcome that? 
I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go with what, you know, the, the challenge that I've kind of faced in recent past, um, you know, and um, uh, it, especially, uh, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, you know, you're coming from that acquisition kind of a world. So um, I'm, I'm kind of in, uh, you know, got my feet in two different worlds at the moment and uh, we are all working and 80% of the time I'm working actually in, in you know, in the, in still the unit or the vertical that, um, you know, that was acquired by TransUnion. And what I've seen uh, is that a lot of the times, you know, you may be driving your project and stuff. What becomes key and sometimes challenging is, um, you know, working with uh, different departments because each one is towing to their own priorities and stuff. So sometimes, um, you know, in, in the recent past, um, um, you know, that has been, um, that keep, keeping timelines working with that other, uh, with that um, um, uh, with that other uh, other group that we are working with and trying to implement actually our product our new product that's coming out and stuff has been has been challenging more because uh, you know there are um, you you're kind of working uh, on your priorities while also trying to see what ends up in, you know, on their roadmap and their priorities, you know, if they kind of sometimes don't sink in, which, which in the recent past, they have not, uh, uh, you know, it, it has been, a, um, it has been difficult for them to actually balance, you know, a gazillion different priorities that's come up on, on the sister, sister team that we're working with to implement. So um, sometimes it does, it does get um, um, challenging to work maybe with an implementation team. All right, and I think we'll, we have quite a few questions coming in, so I'll try to get through all of them, um, and we'll follow up with any that we're not able to respond to here. Um, I would say here, we have one around the technology. Is there any specific discipline or background that you say would work best within the internship role in itself? Um, I think uh, we had a mixture of what level of experience knowledge like in Python or R um, yeah. are we looking for in that field? Yeah, I, I would say in general, um, you know, uh, anybody with a quant field, uh, you know, from the quant field, uh, math, statistics, um, you know, uh, computer science, but with, with the, um, you know, with, with the, a combination of both the, programming as well as uh, statistics would, you know, would kind of uh, tend to do well. That, that's what we basically look for. Because if you if you look at the data science field in general, um, you know, there's, um, uh, we are working with a lot of math and uh, statistics concepts, but we also use programming in our daily, um, you know, uh, in our daily work. Uh, there's a lot of programming, uh, uh, you know, skills that we uh, need besides data wrangling. Um, um, you know, we're always working with data, so um, having that um, having that exposure to the database management systems, uh, you know, is is definitely a plus. Uh, and you know, in the recent past, uh, just exposure to uh, the machine learning algorithms and the AI tools and stuff. Um, you know, all, all of those are um, definitely, definitely, um, you know, um, skill sets that will come, come in handy, uh, you know, during this internship. All right. And I think, I think I'll, I'll say so write this other question to you. Um, since you start off in the internship program, um, can you share a little bit more about kind of what your project was in general and kind of what the focus was? I know so a couple of candidates here are asking about um, if the interns focus on modeling, like training ML models, or more on the data processing pipeline, kind of what that looks like. Uh, sure, would love to. Uh, so it, uh, I mean, that depends on what uh, team you're associated with. Uh, I can speak for like my project. Uh, my project was basically uh, creating a tool for uh, evaluating performance for the models for comparing the models in different time frames, So there was this uh, whole template uh, which I created and uh, which I'm happy we still use for different clients and regions. So, um, uh, but it didn't really stop there. 
Um, I was also involved with like, I was helping my manager with the, the model evaluations she was doing for her clients. So it really depends on like, uh, like how much bandwidth you have and how much bandwidth your manager has to uh, like, how, that's like how much you can learn from them. And that was like, uh, as Pratipa mentioned, we work to uh, our tools and all the performance uh, metrics which we learn in school. Uh, the KS Jenny's, it was based on, all, on that. Awesome. Anything else for you to add, Pratiba? Yeah, just to add, uh, I, I think I heard you, uh, somebody ask about the MLN stuff. So last year we had a couple of uh, students working on uh, a constrained neural network. Uh, and exploring ways that you know you can interpret the results out of it. So yeah, definitely. Um, we we've always joked that you know the interns come in and get the most uh, exciting work and you know problems to to <laughs> work on. So so yeah, definitely um, ML techniques as well. Yeah. And just like I'm, so many questions coming through. Um, I guess this ties into a little bit of what we were discussing with the technical skills, but are there any other particular skills or personal attributes that you would say is essential in order to succeed at TransUnion? Yeah, so what we've seen in the past is, um, you know, um, definitely, uh, you know, a statistical background would, would be helpful. Uh, R in Python, you know, and SQL are, you know, something that we're kind of looking for um, students to have. But personally, what I have valued the most about, you know, the interns that have come in uh, and stuff uh, is, uh, is that, you know, uh, are the ones basically that show curiosity uh, and initiative. Uh, I feel that, that that actually sets them apart from the rest of the rest of the folks who come in. Uh, so yes, definitely, um, you know, the technical aspect and the business acumen and stuff, but um, I personally value a lot of curiosity and you know that that eagerness to learn. Yeah, I, that that's what I'm typically looking for. Okay, great. And another question coming through. Uh, very focused on the technical side and just the skill sets here. Um, they're asking, does the internship role, role um, focus more into the statistic concepts or programming languages such as R and Python? Does Python have more preference over R? Um, and what about A-B testing? Yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, it, it completely depends on the, on the group that you get, you know, assigned to and the kind of uh, project work that you do. I've seen things being, um, you know, as, as Apika mentioned, it could be, um, you know, um, designing a template or, you know, developing a tool, uh, which will require, you know, it could happen, um, either in R or, you know, um, you know, or using statistical packages like Python. Um, I know I had an intern a couple of years ago working on NLP uh, techniques and he was, you know, he was predominantly working on NLP, uh, you know, the Python packages. So mm -hmm. it, it, it totally varies. It could, you know, it could go um, either way. Um, um, but but uh, I have seen a number of them, you know, um, pick up things, you know, even after the internship and stuff. So um, we're, we're happy to coach and guide along the way. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And I think I, I think this one will go towards you a little bit more about your experience as an intern and kind of what would you say your day-to-day -day look like working as an intern? Kind of what's that typical day when you were interning with TransUnion? So, um, I mean, every day was uh, different because uh, when you come in, um, the first week is more about learning about transunion resources, working on access, getting through the trainings. Um, and uh, once you come in, uh, your, your manager will have like a proper 12-week uh, program, like uh, what is the plan for like 12 weeks, like what is she expecting or, uh, um, and also like the weekly, uh, once you have like the project, uh, uh, say uh, familiar with the project, your expectation, you have a weekly uh, check-in with your manager about uh, like what is the progress made. Uh, and you can also like uh, uh, schedule sessions with her. Like I used to uh, schedule like a daily one hour session with her because I wanted to maximize my stay uh, in TransUnion. So, and she was very uh, nice about it. But uh, what, but yeah, once a week is like highly recommended 
that you take the initiative and you get your work reviewed so that you can actually uh, get it like uh, uh, get it out faster so you can work on more things and uh, uh, get maximum experience so uh, typical like first week pretty easy take it easy get to know everyone but yeah from second week onwards i would say just uh, try to maximize your uh, time there um i mean everybody is like super nice try to know them what they are working on and uh, so i had like a, every like few days i had like a catch up meeting with everyone in the team uh, and also like your manager will like uh, uh, like my manager walked me through like okay i should talk to this person for this thing this person for this thing so uh, i know that what the team is uh, uh, like working and if i want to join back as full time i should know like different resources so it's a mix of like uh, your uh, meetings learnings and also like uh, technical uh, um, discussions with the manager great and just to kind of tag on into that speaking with your manager process i know we had a quick question around performance and kind of how does that get evaluated as a contributor in your role and I can share a little bit just in general. And of course, Prativa, I think if you wanna jump on there and share from your perspective and experience, but when it comes to the internship program in particular, um, we do have checkpoints um, for our interns to meet with their managers and do a discussion on how they're doing throughout the summer internship program. Because in the beginning of it, you set up goals. You and your manager spoke in the beginning of the internship. Um, and set up, okay, this is kind of the goals for the summer. This is what we're going to be working towards um, to get you to that next level, right? And helping you develop the skills and getting you to work on the projects that you're looking forward to work on as well. So you'll have that discussion in the beginning, kind of towards the middle of the internship, doing a touch point of, all right, how are you doing? How's everything going? How are you feeling? Right? It's a two-way conversation with your manager. You know, how can they be supporting you or how can they help you um, within those skill sets and what you're working on project wise. Um, and then towards the end, having that close up conversation. But I think those are the two main touch points that you can that I can think of. But throughout your time in your internship, you're going to have weekly check ins with your manager. The conversation that's where the conversations continue. How are you meeting those goals that week? How are how are you moving forward with those projects to meet those goals? I think there really are that ongoing feedback. I don't think it's just always set up for that midsummer and end of summer. I think you have that continuous feedback. And it's also great because you not only are talking to your manager, but you get the opportunity to present out and work with other team members. You can always get their feedback as well on how you're doing on things. So that's just in a general perspective and what I've seen and how we run with that. But um, if Pratiba, I know you've managed our interns before, Atika, you've been on in that seat before, kind of what uh, your your thoughts are on that as well. No, I, I, I think you're spot on, uh, Nancy. Uh, it is a con continuous feedback loop, uh, especially a lot of the times, you know, you kind of have to um, uh, save, the, save the student from himself, uh, you know, who's, who's attempting to do everything without asking too many questions. So some, you know, sometimes you have to coach and guide them to, you know, uh, take help. Uh, you know, reach out and take help and not uh, take it upon themselves to kind of, you know, uh, solve every problem there is to solve, uh, you know, independently. Um, so it is it is a continuous uh, uh, feedback. And like you mentioned, we, we do have, um, you know, uh, a mid-project review and a presentation. And, you know, especially I remember this one particular uh, intern that we had, um, you know, uh, I was out for the mid uh, for that mid uh, project review. Uh, he was, you know, my my boss had sat in on some of the presentation and stuff, and you know, the feedback that you know he had received was he had gone way over his pre presentation time. But um, uh, you know, at the end of the year, I mean, his presentation was so fantastic. Uh, you know. Uh, he, he took in all of that feedback that he had received during the, uh, you know, uh, during the last uh, presentation that he had and stuff. So it was, it was fantastic to see, you know, how he had applied what, you know, um, and worked on the feedback that he had received and kind of, um, um, you know, we, we had a lot of teams eating out of his hand at the end of it and like, 
we want that guy and we want that guy and you know that kind of a thing um yeah um but but definitely um you know um a continuing for feedback what is happening uh, i think me and my manager also spoke about it there's no point in talking like once a year about your performance but rather having like a regular check in with your manager and also like intern or full time it doesn't matter like you have some goals in your mind you're here for a reason so i think uh, make sure that is like fulfilled and that will show your uh, confidence and contribution to the team um just in general we have a question here about the work life balance and what's that like here at trans union so for me it's like uh, it uh, it really depends on the project i'm involved in uh usually there's like you know uh, the team has a proper resource uh, planning done prior to the project uh, but sometimes you know things do overlap sometimes it is like crazy but uh, i think mostly it is like manageable i would say uh and uh, and also like your times uh, at work as really flexible like you can like uh, work uh, as per your convenience and uh, like you can like some days you sign off early but you can like always like make up so it depends on like what project you're on but uh, as i said i would say like two months maybe like crazy but yeah the whole 10 months is like pretty smooth then then we got it acquired by t you know we came kind of from a, a startup culture you know and within a sa- startup culture uh, you have a lot of fires happening all the time so uh, uh, you know you 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 have a gazillion different uh, things that you're trying to achieve all at once uh, so so it's a completely different um, you know um, uh, shift from that startup culture within the tu environment i would agree with that atika that in in majority of the cases you are um, you know setting up your own timelines and stuff to ensure that um, you know that that you have ample time for um, you know uh, for some white space you know where you can take on new stuff if required um, you know and also get your um, get your current project and its timelines done but uh, you know there are times when um, when you you might have to uh you know more time than required i will say that remote working has kind of also been a little helpful in that fashion because i i am a little uh you know uh i i don't have that one hour commute that i did in the past so it's a little easier to you know i i can take a break and get my cup of tea or uh you know and uh have a leisurely uh lunch you know which uh probably didn't happen in the past more because you know you're trying to uh, get back to your family and you know uh, drive your kids to uh, those activities and stuff but uh, uh, in general uh, uh, life and work at tu has been a lot more balanced than you know what i basically came from uh, in a startup world um, so yeah and questions keep coming through um one of the other questions that i'm seeing here is around the interview process um they're asking about how that would look like and if there's a something that they could do to help them stand out so i'll take like the a first half of just the process in itself and fativa i think if there's anything on your side i think uh, when it comes to the interview in itself how they can stand out Um so the first step in the process right is applying to the position. Uh once you apply to the position if you're you're the right fit for that role we you can move to the next step which would be a uh, one way video interview with a technical assessment. So we'll ask you to answer two to three questions or you're recording yourself live um for Prativa and myself and the team to review and then you'll also get asked to complete two technical questions one is um with involving within sequel the other one i believe um it, it's one of either r or python i'm trying to remember the specific ones but it'll involve questions around that that technical assessment we'll review those um and those that we decide to move forward you'll get to interview with the team so there'll be some behavioral questions as well as more uh, a small business case that um the team will have there for you as well um all the interviews are going to be via zoom so similar to this you'll be able to see both um interview panelists during that session 
Um, and typically those interviews about an hour long. So that's just the process in itself. Um, but you know, what are some key things that they can do to stand out? I mean, Jiva, I think you've been in those seats. Um, what would you say kind of comes to mind? I, I, I guess what I have seen in the past and, you know, uh, candidates that have stood out for me are, uh, are those that, uh, you know, that are, that are eager to actually um, uh, come be uh, uh, come and be part of the TU TU world of analytics. Uh, who are eager, who show that initiative, um, you know, and are generally, um, you know, folks that have done their homework about, you know, what we've done, uh, what do we do, um, and you know, um, um, and are aware and are ready to kind of, you know, come and take that on. Uh, I had, um, you know. Um, Couple of years ago, we had um, we had our first round of um, you know um, sessions um, uh, at a university close by, and uh, we had um, um, you know um, met with a bunch of different candidates. And you know, in the course of that interview, uh, one of the candidates had heard that you know we were uh, at the time we were entirely a uh, SaaS and. Uh, his, his uh, um, you know, skill sets were mainly in R and Python. So from, from, from that first interview until that second or the third interview that he had, he had actually not just learned SAS, but he had al also got himself certified. You know, that uh, really, really, you know, um, showed the, you know, the, the initiative on the candidates uh, side. And uh, he, he, he was brought on board. I mean, it was, uh, it was amazing to see how much he wanted to be here. So, um, so yeah, that's, I, I can never forget that, that kid, for sure. <laughs> You're amazing. You think that's better? I yeah. keep saying <laughs> apologies. Uh, <laughs> what about you? I mean, you were in that seat maybe two years ago doing your interviews for the internship program. Any tips that you have um, for the students now as they're going through the process? Well, um, I think um, so. Um, I know they, uh, I was talking to both the interviewers and uh, they were like, they had like so many interviews to take like uh, that day. And I was just like wondering, like, you know, I, I asked them this question. And uh, so one, I, I, I don't know if it works or not, but one tip I would have is like, don't ask questions for the sake of asking questions. Um, so respect like your time and their time. Don't don't ask questions that you can get answers from the internet or like, you know, something you already know of. Uh, something that will add value to you uh, and your work. I think uh, you should like ask that and, because they know that, okay, you really like uh, mean that. So I think, uh, and that like, uh, like Pratipa said, that will like show your interest and eagerness to like, you know, work. And uh, so I think, yeah, that is one tip I would say that that's the right question. Thank you. Now, moving on into a little bit more of also just the knowledge, right? We have a question around um, just what they should know. And they are asking, would having a deep understanding of regression analysis set them up for success in a data science and analytics role here at TransUnion? Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, I think that's fundamental to most everything that we're doing today, and uh, everything is pretty much building off of that. So um, yes, uh, maybe not necessarily for a uh, you know for an uh, um, for an internship necessarily because you know. Um, you may not necessarily be doing anything with it, but um, um, just understanding what is going on once you come on board, uh, I think it'll just help you, um, you know, understand what what exactly you know is on around you within TU, uh, if you know it for sure. And questions around the projects. Um, so they're asking when it comes to projects that the interns are working on, are those real world projects or simulated projects? Those, those are uh, real world projects. In fact, uh, you know, I was just talking to you all about some uh, um, product implementation that you know I've been working with and stuff. And uh, a small piece of that, um, um, you know, of that, uh, um, um, you know, that that product that is coming out actually is based off of that, um, um, you know, 
work that was done by an intern a few years ago. So, uh, so uh, yeah, more often than not, than not, and I and I think I heard uh, Atika also mentioned still using plate and the you know uh, and the tool that she built out so uh, so no these are not uh, something that you know we pull off the shelf have people do and you know put it right back it's definitely uh, in majority of the cases um, we are either um, you know uh, utilizing them directly as is um, you know as in you know the one that I mentioned and Atika's as well as in a lot of cases we are building uh, you know, we are storing all of that information and building off of that to do further research. So um, um, it's definitely, um, definitely coming in handy for sure. Right. I think this question ties into this as well with it being real world projects. Um, will they be more research relevant, for instance, involving new methodology development or industry real world data um, based, aka solving real world data modeling problems? So most of the time they they would be uh, you know research oriented. I uh, I doubt if you're if you know if the interns ever get to work on um, you know like a client or a customer data you know because uh, the customer and client data they kind of have their own life and you know they have their own timelines and stuff. Uh, but more often than not, what uh, um, you know, what uh, the intern is working on again, it is real life data, not necessarily customer data, but uh, you know the the data that resides within the TU world. Um, you know, so uh, that that's basically what they are what, what they are working on. But uh, the problems that you know um, that they may work on could be. Um, uh, could be either something that the team is facing, like you know, um, um, you know, uh, automating a tool to make their everyday life easy, uh, you know, or uh, you know, uh, trying to solve a business problem that the client has come up to, and you know, we we don't necessarily have a know-how on that, and we are trying to actually develop it or expand on what we have, or you know, potentially um, um, attempt uh, looking for other better, more efficient, um, you know, ways of doing um, the same thing. So it, it, it could be, um, it could be anything. All right. Um, and another question that we had coming into this is, I know, Fatima, you mentioned a little bit about this one Canada that kind of went above and beyond there and learning um, new skill sets uh, between the interviews there. Um, but between you and Atika, I think, if you can let me know, is there anything students can do outside of the classroom to help them get into the analytics or data science industry? Are there are personal projects a good way to display the skills that they've acquired? What kind of what is your take on that? And I'll let Atika kind of kick that off with your experience there. Sure. So uh, one thing uh, I would say, like if you want to work for TransUnion, uh, one thing that they will not teach you in school is. Uh, domain knowledge uh, like uh, they teach you technical stuff they teach you uh, skills but they don't teach you the financial industry lingos and uh, I would say just uh, if you're planning to join TransUnion I would say uh, do plan to read about it uh, what are the different uh, uh, like type of models that are built in the industry and uh, there's a lot of information and you can learn um, a domain because those things don't come in books like you um, either talk to somebody who is from the same industry so uh, if you can familiarize yourself with that I think that really um, help you uh, in your career that trans you can. keeps muting me <laughs> um, I think I think Sims just that not liking me too much today but uh, <laughs> Uh, what I was asking was, I know you were mentioning the financial services. Is there anywhere in particular that you suggest for them to take a quick look at or any models, anything that you did to help you understand the financial services space a little more? So, uh, yeah. So every time, like, uh, um, I, I, so when we are in meeting, like during, so this I didn't do uh, prior to my internship, probably I should have. So during my internship, whenever there was a meeting and there was a term point and then everybody was like nodding and I was like, okay, I have to go back and like, you know, really Google that. So it really mostly like you can, uh, so I cannot really 
uh, recall on top of my head. but there is a side that tells you like around like uh, everything about uh, this industry like financial industry uh, so i'll try to like look up and uh, probably put in the chat but uh, yeah like simple googling i think would be like really helpful and you'll be amazed that uh, those terms are like so common out there so don't feel like uh, oh i don't know this and obviously like a lot of help i also got from my uh, mentors at work great yeah definitely i think uh, i learned a lot of financial services like lingo as i was yeah. within trade union itself uh, i think whenever you join a new company in general uh, we all have our own acronyms our own way of saying certain things uh i remember when i first started i had a notebook just filled with like acronyms i would hear That's and then cool. i like, <laughs> I would have to ask afterwards if it was a bigger <laughs> meeting or if it was an immediate like smaller team like quick question i'm like what what, what does this stand for yeah, I, I always take a notebook and a pen meeting i think it will take you yeah to help you yeah uh, and I, I guess just to follow up on that i think it's, i, I wanted to ask you in particular for your internship role right um what is one of the most memorable moments or what did you enjoy the most about your internship experience um, I think the, um, like, uh, like, you know, a lot of like, students have this question that uh, whether it is like a real time project or like a stimulated project. So when I was working on it, I didn't realize the impact of it. But when I uh, like onboarded that tool for one of the clients in Hong Kong, and I remember that was two, three days before my, I was leaving um, as an intern. It was just like so fulfilling because I could see them like uh, it wasn't that uh, like they obviously they had like a good feedback that is different but I could see the impact of that tool and I could see somebody actually like you know use it and uh, delivering to their clients and also like uh, so I think that was very fulfilling moment for me because uh, tool completion I mean I did it um, there were like some sample data but when you see it in like action I think that was like something that really, I mean, I was very proud of uh, that. So I think uh, I think that was my most memorable day at TransUnion. I think that's one of the main things I hear about the students, not just in the data science and analytics internship. I know we'll have other opportunities outside of data science and analytics. Like I mentioned, we have 70 plus internship roles open here. Um, but one of the things is that you get the real world experience. It's not a simulation. You're actually working within the team, helping making that impact um, that really builds your skill set, right? To prepare you for that full time opportunity within within um, TO, um, definitely. And I've even seen movement within our interns going into full time opportunities. Uh, I'm just thinking in general when I'm thinking about accounting and finance. Even um, we have interns starting off in maybe internal audit and said. I'm, I kind of want to go and explore financial services more because during their internship, they had an opportunity to network with individuals across the company and saw that maybe that was the best route. And they, by building those relationships, they were able to explore that. I think with within um, TransUnion and the data science analytics space, it's fairly similar. And the reason why I want to mention that is because wanted and we have a question here about the opportunity you know, to expand your career and how we focus on that, you know, in professional development. How does TransUnion focus on professional development to help our associates? So I wanna to lean towards you both, Prativa and Atika, what your thoughts are on that. Like I mentioned, you know, there is there are so many opportunities for, uh, um, you know, um, uh, working on so many different areas, not just the one that you're, you know, um, vertical that you're uh, that you're integrated with or a part of uh, you can um, you know um, put your hand up for maybe building a tool like I mentioned our uh, analytics technology group uh, you know it's it's uh, something within the analytics team where uh, um, you know we we actually not just uh, build analytics solutions we actually uh, also maintain, uh, you know, our data science toolkit. So, uh, you know, you may be writing a package or developing a tool. It could be in China, or, you know, um, um, that opportunity, uh, you know, like I, like I um, 
mentioned to you before, in my previous uh, work experience, I've not necessarily, uh, you know, been um, been privy to, to or uh, have had the exposure to. Uh, this one is unique uh, in the way that they are actually um, creating those opportunities, you know, almost on a uh, everyday basis, uh, you know, which, which is where you're where you're uh, pretty much, diff, you know, building out your skills and stuff. So, uh, um, and I and I and I know TU also has, um, um, you know, supports, uh, um, you know, any master's program or any kind of, uh, you know, uh, it has a bunch of certifications and stuff which you can actually uh, do within the TU, um, you know, through the TU um, uh, channels. But it also supports uh, any education related. Um, you know, uh, um, you know, if you if you want to pursue your masters, uh, or if you want to pursue any kind of uh, um, you know developmental uh, um, you know programs outside of TU, it definitely supports that. And I would say we have our very own career coach here at TransUnion as well. Um, so getting the opportunity to meet with her and just continue to expand. Um, your reach too. We have individuals sometimes they want to move into different spaces or different teams. So how to do that, how to build the skill set, like Tiva mentioned, we have those opportunities for you to continue to get certifications or continue your your studies if you want to continue with a master's degree. I think there is that support within the team as well. Um, but I do see we're right on time. It just flew by here. Um, so want to just tell everyone because I think one of the main questions we were getting is about how to apply for the internship role. Um, if you've gone through AOP, you can see our profile there. The data science and analytics internship is posted. Um, it will be posted for about another week there. So please take the time to apply if you're interested. Um, we'll be reaching out to the students in, in a bit, um, those who are moving forward to the next step. So please take a look there. Um, I sent the link, I believe in the chat, but again, if you go and visit the Way Out page, you'll see all of our internship roles posted. Um, if you have any other questions, just feel free to reach out. We're very excited to have uh, met with you all today. Um, feel free to add us on LinkedIn to continue the conversations there. Um, but thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it.